Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Phil Travis, and it's week nine here. Uh, EOU, History 448, uh, History of Modern Russia. Uh, this week, we have a lighter week. Um, we're just going to have our graded discussion forum. Remember, um, make your, your first post or reply by Thursday. Make sure you have one post, two replies over two separate days during the week. Just fulfill those basic requirements. Uh, make sure your posts and replies are of a substantial nature. There's no reason for me to even say it because we've been doing really as a class. We do we've been doing great with our discussion forums. Uh, so this week, just the discussion forum. Uh, we're back in our service book. So we're we're done with reading the Tobin book. We'll be back looking at service. We'll be reading chapter 20 and 21. And uh, this week, we're primarily going to be examining the period of détente. So detente refers to a period of a lessening of tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States, which occurs in the 1970s. And um, it's ushered in largely by agreements, um, uh, you know, ushered through by first Richard Nixon and uh, and then and Lenoy Brezhnev, and then, of course, uh, Gerald Ford and Lenoy Brezhnev. And these were agreements um, like the Helsinki Accords under the Gerald Ford administration, um, the Strategic Arms Limitation Agreement with Nixon and Brezhnev, and, of course, the ABM Treaty, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty Agreement. These were some of the real core um, steps towards creating uh, detente. Um, of course, too, it's during the Nixon administration where we have the visits of Nixon and Kissinger to China in the beginning of the process of the opening of the door to China, which um, even though the Chinese and the Soviets had very much kind of split by the 1970s, um, this is sometimes referred to as the sino soviet split, um, the kind of opening of the, of the way to normalization of relations with the government in Beijing, the, the Chinese communist government, was also considered to be um, a major step in developing uh, the atmosphere of detente in the 1970s. Again, a sort of lessening of tensions in the Cold War. Um, so... We're reading Service, Chapter 2021. 20, Our only grade in assignment this week is the discussion forum. Uh, for that reason, I want everyone to make sure that you're working on your papers this week. Um, I've had some folks, you know, send, you know, revised paper ideas, re revised thesis statements back to me, and that's great. You know, your papers should be evolving as you do research and as you think about my comments and as you delve into your own research. It's a very normal thing for many of you to, you know, have to adjust and change your, your topic. And that's totally fine. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So uh, use this week to work on that paper. Uh, kind of a short article length paper. And uh, I expect it to be based in the you know, good academic research. And I expect you to make a historical argument and like argue for it consistently through the paper in a way that's logical and clear and concise. So make sure you work on it like this week. Don't don't leave it um, to the last second. If you work on a project like this little by little, you know, uh, little by little, day after day, you'll get it done. And it'll be a lot better quality than if you leave it to the last second. And that's a lesson for writing your big capstones as well. If you if you work on it a little by little, you get stuff down on paper. It's easier to revise it than it is to start from scratch. So work on your papers this week. Um, I have a presentation this week. Uh, obviously, every week I have my recorded presentations for you, and I'm glad to see a lot of people watching those presentations. Uh, I, you know, I love to see people uh, watching the presentations. It takes a lot of work to put those together, believe it or not. And uh, I really get in. I, I really enjoy putting them together. I get into putting them together. But I like to see that people are watching them and learning and getting something out of them. So uh, my presentation this week is on detente between the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, so with that said, um, here, here's now for the factoid. Um, I think that's all uh, in terms of the information. Let's uh, The factoid for this week is uh, this. So the Soviet Union, by the 1970s, uh, was regarded as what historians might call a gerontocracy. Uh, it was an old leadership, and an old leadership that was um, really incapable of meaningful reform. By the end of the decade, by 1981, the average age of top leaders in, in, in the Soviet Union in Moscow was 71 years old. Uh, 
Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, who was in his 50s, uh, was considered sort of a, you know, sort of a, a young, a youngster in the uh, Soviet leadership. Um, so the Soviet Union was in the 70s what you might call a gerontocracy, and it, this caused the Soviet Union to really suffer, whereas Nikita Khrushchev had really sought to take bold steps to sort of reform the Soviet Union, of course with some significant backlash with uh, events in Poland and Hungary and so forth, uh, but Nikita Khrushchev had sought to really make some steps towards reforming the Soviet Union, and you'll see after after the 70s, when Mikhail Gorbachev becomes a uh, Soviet leader, um, he will also take some bold steps at reform, steps that ultimately, as we'll see next week, result in the collapse of the Soviet empire. Um, but in the 1970s, there was really no reform-minded individuals uh, present in the Soviet Union. Uh, the leadership was very old, and not only was the leadership very old, the leadership very much owed its existence to Stalin. Um, Stalin had, the leaders in the, in the 70s were all individuals who had sort of escaped Stalin's purges. Um, they had been around the mid around their mid-30s when Stalin was purging a lot of the uh, the top officials or the or the, the 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 heads of the military and these types of things which we've talked about, and um, uh, as a result of this, the leadership that emerged in the sixties and seventies was the leadership that, when Stalin was doing those purges, was younger um, and sort of less experienced, um, and therefore escaped the purges. And so this leadership sort of owed its existence to Stalin, and as a result of that. Um, some of those leaders, as they became older and more nostalgic, had a degree of, of, of reverence for the legacy of Stalin that was not possessed, by example, for example, by like Nikita Khrushchev. And, uh, and as a result of this, this made it even more difficult for them to reform a system that was really demonstrating some very huge problems Um um, at the time, and they continually tried things like, you know, certain aspects of collectivized agriculture, despite the fact that those types of approaches had really shown themselves to pretty abundantly be failing. Um, <clears throat> and so the factoid for this week is that the Soviet Union in the 1970s uh, was regarded as a gerontocracy. Uh, they very much owed their existence to uh, uh, to Joseph Stalin. Uh, the fact that they had escaped the purges, and uh, in this lack of reform in the 1970s very much set the Soviet Union up for the reform efforts led by Mikhail Gorbachev in the 1980s. So the Soviet Union in the 1970s, a gerontocracy, really enabled and incapable of meaningful reform. All right, guys, let's have a great week. Email me if you have any questions, and, uh, and um, you know, I'll see you in the discussion forum this week, guys.